I'm at Young and Eglinton near the offices of AshleyMadison.com, a website that allows married people, unhappy, to meet up and, well, have an affair. The Mark caught up with Noel Biederman, the founder and CEO, to tell us a little bit more about the website. So what inspired you to start Ashley Madison? You know, business opportunity. That's what it comes down to when you're an entrepreneur. And so the one we identified really, you know, attracted to us was that 30 to 35 percent of people going to so-called single or matchmaking services weren't single at all. So was that a marketplace we could maybe cannibalize, hijack, move over to a community of like-minded adults? And that's the genesis of Ashley Madison. And so 5.3 million members later, we were onto something. So I was wondering if you could explain the Ashley Madison concept to me. Why would using this service make some men more likely to stay in their marriages? I think infidelity often saves a marriage. It preserves a marriage. There's a situation where a couple's together, they might truly cherish one another. They definitely love their children, like their work and their home and their extended family, but their intimacy is gone or struggling. And so the notion, I suppose, that some people want to put forward is, well, they should just pick up and leave. That seems to be awfully harsh, to leave behind your kids and your family because your intimacy is gone. But that's the notion we have in these kind of monogamous, you know, cultural ones that have have grown up. But instead, what I think most people end up doing, and the numbers are 60%, 70%, whichever you tend to believe, is people stray. They go to strip clubs, they go to massage parlors, they go visit prostitutes, or they have affairs in the workplace or on those single things, as I mentioned before. And so this is part of the human condition. This is what people do. We didn't invent infidelity. We're just saying, you know what? Some of the ways it's pursued lead to loss of jobs or meeting, you know, unbeknownst to a single person, you're already in a relationship, that's going to end badly, or you're breaking the law. So why not do it in a community where everybody knows what they're getting into? And again, that's part of our success. So as someone in the infidelity business, how do you feel about divorce? It's divorce that is the true harm to uh, a family and society, right? It, it's children of divorce raised by a single parent that have, all the statistics bear it out, less opportunities in life. They just don't have the same educational opportunities, they don't get the same job opportunities, college opportunities, automotive, whatever it ends up being. They're just, they're, they're put into a different class of citizenship because of it. And that's not to say divorce is inappropriate in certain circumstances. What I'm suggesting is, if the only reason you decide that you think you want to leave your family is because you're not happy in your sex life, then that's a really selfish choice. That's really you saying, you know what, sex is more important than all the factors I just described. I think that's abhorrent. To me, I would much rather try and create a culture or a society that says, you know what, if, if that's not really working for you, let's de-emphasize sex. Let's not make it the central tenant of a marriage. Let's make it an element for you. And we should all try and do it or acknowledge that it's probably worth pursuing or trying. But if you can't, don't just leave your family. There's got to be ulterior ways to still be a family person, commit financially and time to your family, and then figure out how to make yourself happy in your sex life. Now, you've become a figurehead of a, of a way of life as the CEO of this company, and it's drawing a lot of criticism. Are you comfortable with this? <laughs> I had to become comfortable with it. I had to become you know, well-versed in the topic and in the field. And if you're going to be looked at as the king of infidelity, I suppose you you have a choice to embrace it or you can run for the hills. But part of our strategy is to do this, right, is to go and talk to the media and explain us why why we built the service. It's really no different, though, than you look. And there's been other entrepreneurs who are also at the bleeding edge of stuff that was controversial at the time. So Hugh Hefner is an interesting example, right? Here's a guy who had to fight like the Dickens, legal everywhere, just to publish a magazine, which now we would find so complex that had nude women in it or topless women in it. Back then, radical, totally radical, you know, but a few decades later, we look back at it and say, what was the big deal? Right now, a business focusing around adultery and infidelity feels very radical. Some people have called it the most controversial website ever created. But I don't know, the generation on its heels coming up through Facebook and able to connect with past lovers and friends and, you know, has a different view of divorce, you know, more polyamorous. I don't know that they'll see it the same way. I don't know that they'll be as faithful to people, and it's one of the reasons why we have a lot of young women on our service, married just one or two years. We call them the honeymoon group, whatever. And, you know, we didn't expect that marketplace, but they're one of our fastest growing market segments. So where do you want this business to go? It's already happening, right? We're, we're now uh, in the UK. We're in Australia. We have a Spanish version of the site for domestic consumption. Uh, we're looking at marketplaces like Brazil. I think infidelity is an international phenomenon. It crosses both genders every race, all socioeconomic groups. So there's really a marketplace we, can't, we, we would, be, would not be successful in. So it's really just up to us. It's up to us to say, we build a great product here in Canada and we intend to export it across the world.